Hey there, Facebook. So I'm uh, clicking the invite button and sharing this out. I hope you will too. As always, if you appreciate these videos, if it's easy for you, if you feel like it, you're welcome to contribute to my PayPal, paypal.me uh, backslash Tawasi Activist Blog. I also am accepting subscribers. You can subscribe for as little as $1 a month at Patreon, patreon.com backslash Tawasi Activist Blog. So uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about something that I've been experiencing and perceiving and that I see as becoming more prevalent and also more accepted. Um, you know, <clears throat> just my NASCAR hat here, um, which I got out of the free box, by the way, so I didn't pay anything for it. it just keeps the sun out of my eyes. I'm not really a Napa fan. But uh, yeah, I just want to talk to you guys about the bourgeoisie and, uh, you know, the Burgoyes and uh, the elitist class of people because, you know, there's an elitist class of people and they're, ru they're ruling this country right now. And it's, it's difficult to see it from the inside if you happen to be one of those people, but from the outside, it's really obvious. So um, I had some posts earlier about quality of life laws. I'm not sure whether you guys got to see those or not, but the way that quality of life laws work is that um, they, they ban certain behaviors. And uh, here in Eugene, for instance, there's a law against sitting, there's a law against standing, there's a law against laying. Um, there's definitely a law against sleeping. There's a law against dogs, and there's a law against cigarettes. So um, all of these laws, they're not equally enforced. What happens is that these laws were written by a class of people that know that the police are here to do their bidding. So the police enforce these laws selectively, and they go after certain types of individuals using these laws as leverage in order to attack the underclass of citizens. So, um, for instance, in Eugene, if you own a dog and you have that dog downtown, then there's a chance that you could get a $100 fine. And a $100 fine for someone, for some people, is not a big deal, but like that's a lot more money than I have. I don't have $100 for paying a fine. But... Um, it's not equally enforced. And this is, this is the rub, is that that law against dog ownership is enforced almost exclusively against the poverty stricken. So what happens is laws like the no sit, no stand, no lie law, they use that law to directly attack poverty stricken people. Because if you're a wealthy person, you can just sit, you can just sit right here. Like you can, you can sit right here. But if, you, if you're a poor person, you can't afford the coffee that they sell at this place. And then as a result of that, you have to find somewhere else to sit. And if you sit on the sidewalk, that's considered cause for arrest. Isn't that crazy? Um, but I, you know, I, wanna, I wanna kind of bring this back a little bit, step back from that to this other quality of life law that says you cannot sleep. You cannot sleep and you cannot sleep in public. It's against the law to sleep. So what happens in Eugene is that if you are caught sleeping, that's cause for arrest. And the police will take you to jail and they'll give you a ticket. But this is the thing that, that I know because I've, I've read a lot of history and I understand uh, that this isn't a new thing. These laws didn't used to be used against the poor. They were used against colored people. So here in Eugene, we used to have sunset laws. It said if you didn't leave town before it got dark, then you could get your ass beat and potentially get hung because uh, colored people, whether you're black, brown, yellow, or red, are not allowed in the city of Eugene after sunset. It's called a sunset law. Now, these sunset laws are completely unconstitutional and 100% immoral. And so all they did is just removed the language that said people of color and replaced it with homeless people. 
So what happens is now the law justifies discrimination against poor people. It actually is written in such a way that allows just enforcement against people who otherwise are not criminals. You know, if you are asleep, like say that you sleep like right here next to my backpack, say that you go to sleep right there. There's no victim. I'm not harming a single soul. In fact, uh, by sleeping, I'm attempting to preserve my mental stability and my ability to cope with with an intense reality. But um, in Eugene, it's against the law to sleep. So what ends up happening is the city of Eugene spends all of this money attacking people for sleeping. They have police that patrol for sleeping people. Then we spend money on the judicial system so that law enforcement and the judicial system can incarcerate those individuals who are not victimizing anyone, mind you, but just sleeping. So if you're sleeping, that's considered such a crime that you can be arrested. And then they use all this money for law enforcement, all this money for incarceration, all of this money on the judicial branch to arrest a person. Now, you can't reform a person from sleeping. I mean, when that person gets out of jail, they're still going to have to sleep. You, d you just can't reform a person from sleeping by arresting them. So what ends up happening is that that same person who was arrested, put through jail, uh, ended up with you know, whatever kind of fines and payments that they owe, still has to sleep when they get out of jail and ends up getting arrested again for sleeping. Okay, now, um, again, we come back to class warfare. Okay, the way that class warfare works against that individual who didn't victimize anyone, was just sleeping, is that then the uh, judicial system tells, tells that person they're a criminal and they end up, if they can't pay their fines, they end up with a warrant. Okay, now, um, at that point, oops. All right, froze up for a second there. Um, at that point, the individual who was asleep, you know, they weren't doing, they weren't victimizing anyone. Uh, that person ends up with a warrant. And then, this is the part that's crazy, they get characterized as criminals. If you, if you watch the news, then you'll hear them say, uh, this person was arrested today and they had numerous warrants and uh, bench warrants and they're a repeat offender, they're criminal repeat offender. Meanwhile, what's their offense? They were asleep. But in this city, in the city of Eugene, it's considered a criminal activity to sleep. So um, the, re the reason for that is the poverty-stricken people are um, unsavory. You know, they don't, they don't glitter and shine in the eye of the bourgeois class. You know, the people who have attained whatever level of wealth through land theft and genocide and forced uh, forced work, you know, slavery, because a lot of a lot of the wealth in this country was created through slavery. Um, those people don't want to see anyone who's suffering the consequences of their immoral structures. So instead of you know facilitating the individuals to get out of the situation where they end up sleeping in the street. They criminalize those people and further victimize them, making them into uh, criminal, what do, you, what do they call it, hardened criminal, because they have multiple arrests. Once you get multiple arrests, then you're a hardened criminal. But like I said, a lot of these crimes, they don't have a victim. There's nobody suffering uh, because of a person sleeping. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about this and it's, it's certainly not any way to get into uh, city council. Like, the city council is responsible for writing these laws that are unconstitutional. It's 100% unconstitutional to uh, attack a class of people based on their status. It's the 17th Amendment to the Constitution, the Equal Protection Clause. It says that you can't create a law that targets a select group of people. So. Um, you know, these laws violate the Constitution. More importantly, they're immoral. 
They're 100% immoral. There's no reason that we should be attacking the least among us. Um, you know, a good Christian would know that uh, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was cold, you clothed me. And when I was naked, you gave me shelter. I, I'm not a good Christian, so I don't know exactly how that goes. But essentially, what that parable is saying at the end is that which you have done for the least of my brothers and sisters, you also did for me. In Eugene, what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters is incarcerate them and make them into criminals. And that's the way that the law is going, not just here in Eugene, <laughs> across the country, but also around the whole world. Because there is an agenda to criminalize poverty. Uh, I was explaining this to someone yesterday because um, the law that he was trying to enforce uh, is a law that exists in Venezuela. So right now, Americans, we really look down our nose at Venezuela. We're like, oh, those socialist Venezuelans, they don't even care for their own people. But the laws that they have in place are identical to the laws here. So, I mean, identical, like word for word identical. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually copied and pasted the laws straight from our books into theirs. But uh, the long and short of this rant is that if you criminalize the poverty-stricken people of your country, you're a total asshole. And that's the nicest thing that I have to say about you. And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So, uh, you know, be nice to people, do nice things for weird people, don't be a bourgeoisie, do not be a burgoise, you know, uh, no war except class war. With all that said, I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you have a beautiful day.